at your expense. You are paying for the destruction of the next generation. Now, maybe that doesn't bother you, but it bothers me. And if you think I leave my gorgeous wife and travel all over the world, been gone, let's see, over 200 days a year for years now, flew 215 times last year, spoke over 900 times. If you think I leave my gorgeous wife and my four grandkids because I like being gone, you are mistaken. Okay? They would much rather be home. But there's a war going on. Somebody's got to warn the troops. Hello, to arms, the British are coming, you know, pick up your gun, guys, let's go. There are kids by the billions being brainwashed on this planet. And Satan is using dinosaurs to do it. Nearly all the books say millions of years ago. And then we got some Christians that totally ignore the subject because they don't have an answer. Well, study to show yourself approved unto God. Get the answer and go share it with somebody, okay? Millions of years ago, the book says. I go to museums all the time. just makes my blood boil. You see hundreds and hundreds of kids coming past these incredible displays. I mean, beautiful big dinosaur skeletons. And guess what the sign says at the bottom? Millions of years ago. See, Christians don't seem to understand this. The museums and science centers of the world, that is their church. They are preaching their gospel just like you are trying to preach your gospel. And they're using your tax dollars to preach their gospel. That's how it happens. Millions of years ago. The Bible says, Behemoth lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and fens. Now the word fens is an old English word that means the swamp. You know the biggest swamp in the world is in the middle of Africa. It's called the Likwala Swamp. That swamp is huge. Most Americans don't appreciate the size of Africa. Here's what Africa looks like next to the entire United States. Africa is gigantic, okay? That swamp is bigger is the same size as the state of, state of Florida, 55,000 square miles. That swamp is huge. Did you know that swamp is today is 80% unexplored? In 1885, Congo in Africa was taken over by Belgium, and it was called the Belgian Congo for many, many years. In 1960, the communists liberated them. <clears throat> you know how the communists liberate countries. They kill everybody. Okay, you're free now. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> There were reports in that swamp <clears throat> from the 1700s when the missionaries went in there and said, man, there are dinosaurs still living in that swamp. Dinosaurs still alive? 1910, New York Herald ran an article about dinosaurs still living in Africa's swamps. Here's the Saturday Evening Post, 1948. There could be dinosaurs still alive in Africa. A big game hunter named uh, <clears throat> Mr. Gobbler returned from a trip to Angola he announced to the Cape Town newspaper, the Cape Argus, that there was an animal of large dimensions, the description of which could only fit a dinosaur. The natives call it Chippequi. In Central African Republic, they call it Naguri. Roy Mackle went there in 1980 <clears throat> on an expedition. He spent a quarter million dollars, went back again the next year, went to that swamp. He said it's the most miserable swamp on planet Earth. The mosquitoes landed on them at the rate of about 1,000 an hour Constantly. I mean, like swarms of dust around you. Bloodthirsty mosquitoes. 95 degrees, 95% humidity all the time. As they traveled around the swamp, the natives talked about this animal called Mahamba. <clears throat> he said, what's that? And they showed him a crocodile. Oh, yeah, that the Mahamba right there, Mahamba. He said, how big does it get? They pasted it off on the sandbar, 50 feet long. Now, if you're a pygmy, 4 foot 4, a 50 foot crocodile looks really big to you, okay? And everybody says, no, crocodiles, they never get past about 17 feet. Oh, I don't think that's correct. Earlier in the, the summer of uh, 2005, they killed a 24-foot crocodile in that swamp. Of course, the natives will say, oh, you should see the big ones. The natives also talk about an animal they call Mokale Umbembe. Mokale Umbembe? What on earth is that? Well, if you show them the picture of an apatosaurus, they'll say, yep, yep, that's it, Mokale Mbembe. The natives claim these animals live underwater. They're very rare. Of course, they're in the swamp in Africa, and there's, nobody goes out at night anyway, and there's no lights over there at night. But the animals are seen mostly early, early morning or late in the evening when they come out, and their favorite plant is the Malombo plant. There's Dr. Mackle holding a Malombo plant. Dr. Mackle was a University of Chicago microbiology professor, and he went over there and studied this carefully and came back and wrote a book called A Living Dinosaur? Now, he believes in evolution, but his book is great about the evidence for dinosaurs still living in African swamp. 
They found footprints of the creatures. A missionary friend of mine was there for 43 years as a missionary, Eugene Thomas. He's in Ohio now. Here's his phone number. Call him up. He was there for 43 years. He said, I had two pygmies in my church that killed one and ate it. Dinosaurs. There have been reports of these creatures in that swamp for a long time. One Belgian Congo biologist went up there, upriver 500 miles to, from his house and said, he said he saw one, but his camera malfunctioned because the high humidity apparently ruined all the mechanisms inside. I don't know. But there have been many reports of dinosaurs in that swamp, and you can study this for yourself. Uh, one group went there, and they said the creature was dark brown in color. The skin appeared slick and smooth, had a long neck and a small head. They heard it. They saw it. It was making a roaring noise, and the government officials even saw it. There's an article here in the Boston Herald newspaper about a group going over to look for the dinosaurs still alive in the Congo swamp. All you got to do is type in cryptozoology. Crypto means hidden. Zoology means study of animals. Cryptozoology, you'll find all kinds of stuff about dinosaurs still living. <clears throat> the natives claim these animals live in caves along the side of the river. Uh, William Gibbons has been there four times now to the Congo swamp. He and I wrote this book together for kids, Claws, Jaws, and Dinosaurs. William Gibbons wrote me a letter. He said, According to our guide, Pierre Sima, we were the first white men to actually penetrate the forest and swamps bordering the Buamba River. Our informants, almost all of them Baca pygmies, with the exception of an elderly Cameroonian Muslim, are perfectly familiar with all the known and unknown animals of the swamps. While they do not regard Lakila Mbembe, it's a different language, okay, as being an unusual animal, <clears throat> they do fear the creature because of its ferocity in attacking hippos, elephants, and crocodiles. The animal appears to be completely intolerant of any other large creature that shares the river and controls large stretches of the river, particularly where those food supplies, where the food supply is present. The two suspected dinosaurians, Mokale Mbembe and Nagubu, are observed and encountered on a regular basis. I question an older Baca couple that work on Pierre's plantation. Like most pygmies, they are very familiar with the flora and fauna of the region. I presented them with our book of known African animals and dinosaur illustrations. About 98% of the dinosaur illustrations were rejected, except for two, which they picked out without hesitation that they had observed, a sauropod dinosaur and a triceratops. Now, why would people in the middle of the swamp in Africa say, oh, yeah, we've seen that one? Missionary Cal Bombay was there for years in Kenya. He said he and his wife saw one of these creatures, but the plates on the back were bigger, more like a stegosaurus. Down in South America... They've got the Amazon jungle, which is huge. In 1907, the British Army sent Colonel Fawcett to mark the boundary between Brazil and Peru. He was an officer in the Royal Engineers and was known as a order, as recorder of, meticulous recorder of facts. In the Benny swamps, he said he saw what he believed to be a diplodocus. The natives and the tribes around there said, oh yeah, that animal still lives out here in the swamp. Colonel Fawcett's son made sketches of the footprints. In 1883, uh, Scientific American ran this article before they got committed to evolution. An article like this would never make it in Scientific American today because now they're dedicated to preserving the theory. But they said the Brazilian minister at La Paz, Bolivia, had remitted to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Rio photographs of drawings of an extraordinary saurian killed on the Beni after receiving 36 balls. By order of the president, the dried body, which had been preserved and was sent to La Paz, it was 12 meters long, 39 feet from snout to point. It had scale armor. The neck is long, the belly large, and almost dragging the ground. Professor Gilvetti examined the beast, said it's a member of a lost species. The Indians in that region make small earthen vessels in the same shape, probably copied from nature. Dinosaurs? Vaughn Goff called me three days ago as I was driving up here to Indiana. He said, yeah, the natives in his area uh, talk about a lizard that's 30 feet long, 5 feet tall, makes a thundering noise to startle its prey. The native Waiwai Indians call it uh, Uru Ferry, and they are terrified of this creature. Here's his email, Vaughn at GoffMinistries.org. Email him. They're talking about dinosaurs still in the swamp down there. Here's a giant snake that was killed several years ago, 35-foot snake. It had eaten a man who fell asleep on the job. That's a big river. There's a lake in Scotland called Loch Ness. Has anybody ever heard of Loch Ness? Loch Ness is a huge lake, 24 miles long, a mile to a mile and a half wide, up to 900 feet deep. Loch Ness is big enough that everybody on planet Earth could go drowned in it at the same time. It would hold the entire population of the world. Six billion people would fit in that lake. It's huge. In 1933, a roadbed was cut into the side of the mountain, 
Because before 1933, if you wanted to see the lake, you got to climb over the mountains or go up river seven miles in your boat. So not many people went there. Very sparsely populated. 1933, the first year the road was put in, there were 52 separate sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. Hmm. This author said there have been 9,000 reported sightings today. Now that was back in the 1960s when this book was written. Today it's over 11,000 reported sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. 11,000. Of course, some are fakes and frauds, okay? I wouldn't trust the, you know, uh, weekly world news, you know, <laughs> where they got all this weird stuff in there. But Sir Peter Scott's a member of Parliament. He said he saw it. He believes it's a plesiosaur. Almost everybody that sees it says it's this animal right here, a plesiosaur. Long neck, four big flippers. One guy wrote a book and he said, some people think Nessie is a plesiosaur. There's one thing wrong with this theory. Plesiosaurs are believed to have become extinct 70 million years ago. Oh, is that what's wrong with the theory? <laughs> I think this evolution theory has got to be the biggest hindrance to scientific research there's ever been. Okay? You look at the facts, forget your theories, look at the facts and come up with your conclusions. Okay? Arthur Grant nearly ran into Nessie on his motorcycle one night. He said, I had a splendid view of